Hi, I'm Kevin Kunzman, and this is MD Magazine News Network. It's clinical news for connected physicians. The average annual U.S. life expectancy age has dropped for the second consecutive year. A new report from the CDC's National Center for Health Statistics found that the life expectancy in the U.S. population was 78.6 years in 2016, a drop of 0.1 year from 2015. It is the first recorded decrease in average U.S. life expectancy in two consecutive years since 1962 and 1963. The age-specific death rate for persons aged 25 to 34 showed the greatest jump, increasing over 10% from its 2015 rate per 100,000 population. While heart disease and cancer continue to be the leading causes of death in the U.S., 2016 saw a substantial increase in deaths related to drug overdose, unintentional injury, Alzheimer's disease, and suicide. Smoking cessation therapy, varanicline, has been found to increase patients' risk of cardiovascular events. According to a Canadian government-funded study, the popular therapy marketed as Chantix in the U.S. raises a patient's risk of hospitalization or emergency department admission by 34%. The review analysis of 50,000-plus Toronto-based patients backed a 2011 safety warning issued by the FDA, which stated that varanicline may be associated with an increased risk of particular cardiovascular events in patients already suffering from similar conditions. A recently published study suggests that the most beneficial age for a one-time HIV screening in general population without identified risk factors is 25 years old. With current CDC guidelines recommending at least one HCV screening for U.S. patients between the ages of 13 and 64, researchers advise a supplemental test at age 25. If practiced, the screening could lead to substantial gains in HIV-infected life expectancy under cost-effective measures. The FDA has approved ertugliflozin for the treatment of glycemic control in patients with type 2 diabetes. The SGLT1 inhibitor from Merck and Pfizer will be marketed as a single therapy and fixed dose combination therapy with citagliptin or metformin. In comparison trials with a placebo control population, ertugliflozin reported greater reductions in average blood glucose, fasting plasma glucose, body weight, systolic blood pressure, and diastolic blood pressure. It is anticipated to be available in the U.S. market in early 2018. For these stories and more, visit us at mdmag.com. I'm Kevin Kunzman for MDNN. Thank you for watching and have a happy new year.